Welcome back to another episode of Daily Wrap Up Crew. No book up, but I go by the name of Eli. As always, we got Ace with us. It's Ace the Gold. I'm here. It's, I'm like 10 minutes late, but I'm still great. You know what I mean? Tune in. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, anyway, man, we got a Ju gonna come in a little bit later, hopefully. I don't know. He'd be, you know how Ju be getting. But um, anyway, we got an important episode, man. I've been looking forward to this episode for a long time. Uh, we got Kizzle in the building from yes, Express sir. Yourself Black Man. Mm. Um, we're going to have some well-needed conversation, man. Let them know where they can find you at and um, a little bit about yourself. Absolutely. So Express Yourself Black Man is a mental health platform. It's geared towards black men, of course. Mm -hmm. And what we talk about is mental health, relationships, dating, um, anxiety, insecurity, depression, just a variety of things that we normally consider taboo in our community, right? And mm -hmm. it's all about solutions, right? So I don't like bringing up topics and things that our issues in our community without trying to have some kind of solution that's paired with it, right? So I do a lot of content around what's an actual issue in our community and then how can we also solve it, especially as black men? Like what can we do in terms of personal accountability um, that can help us to be better so that we can be better in our community? Um, and so we're launching something, um, we've, we've launched something already in our platform called Safe Haven. It's a private healing community. What we have is low cost therapy. We have a free medical concierge service which basically books it finds black doctors for, for black men. Um, and then we also have like a community support, right? So we have a network of black men that are in there healing, actually doing the work. So that's outside of the IG. So people can find me on at Express Yourself Black Men on all social media platforms. But that's what we do. It's really all about solution-based thinking and stop and, and, and not bringing up problems without um, us actually having solutions in place or actually trying to bring uh, solutions to, to our community, man. Because I think a lot of times we do a lot of that, right? Like we we bring up a lot of problems, but we don't actually try and take action in, in solving those. And I don't want to I don't want to continue to repeat that cycle. So. Right. So I want to ask you, how do you go about coming up with these solutions? So the solutions that I that I come up with are for me. Right. So mm -hmm. these are things that work specifically for me. Yeah, right. Okay. And so I consider myself right not to not to downplay myself, but I consider myself the average black man. Right. Okay. Like I'm. I'm not, I'm no better than you. I'm no better than you. Right? Ain't nothing like, wrong with being average. And, and then, I'm letting these people tell you that. Yeah, 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 right, right. Yeah, and, there's not, and there's nothing wrong with that, right? I'm yeah, not right. saying that there's anything wrong with that, but there's a power in that. There's actually strength in that, right? Because what that means is that if something works for you and you're the average person in your demographic, that means it potentially it works work for something. Exactly, right? Yeah. And what I found on the platform is that when I put up stuff and I say, black man, here's 10 things or 10 ways that you can do this or 10 ways that you can deal with this. Mm. And I'm talking about from my personal experience, mm. I got a bunch of people in the comments like, yo, bro, this is great. This actually helped me. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So I put up solutions based on what works for me. Mm -hmm. And I always say, if it doesn't work for somebody else, all right, that's fine. Let's figure out what works for you so that we can help other people as well. Right. So we can have a conversation about it instead of arguing back and forth in the comments about things that aren't actually helping to push the culture forward. You know what I'm saying? So mm -hmm. that's the way I think about solutions and also evidence-based stuff as well. Always got to add evidence in there, um, Google and research stuff. I bring therapists onto the platform to have conversations on the podcast to also collaborate on posts and stuff like that too. So it's a collaborative effort, but for the most part, when I think about black men in general and the average and how we deal with things, I try to think about it from my experience and then also add in some evidence-based stuff that I've learned as well. Got you, got you. So um, with that being said, obviously you special in, well, you specialize in mental health for the black community, but specifically mm -hmm. black men. Mm -hmm. How important is mental health and physical health for black men? I would say uh, it's the most important thing, I think. And the reason why I say that, right, and I know that sounds like cliche. I feel like a lot, a lot of us say that about the things that we're passionate about. Um, but the reason why I say mental health is the most important thing is because we see it all the time where we have people that are in our community that we feel like are at the pinnacle of their like life and their career and they're killing themselves, right? Mm -hmm. Or they're telling, they're coming out and they're saying, I'm depressed, I need help, right? And there's nothing wrong with saying that, but it goes to show that regardless of what amount of status you have, how much success you have, how, how, how good looking your girl is or your man is, whatever the case may be, if your mental is not right, it don't matter. Yeah. Like it really doesn't matter, right? So yes. I think that's, it's paramount. Like we have to get into a habit of not just identifying success as how how much we have in terms of status, fame, money, all that kind of stuff. But success should really be a mindset and a, a peace of mind thing. How do you feel about yourself? How do you feel about the things that you do? Are you excited about getting up and going to come record a podcast episode? You get what I'm saying? So we have to think about it in those terms and stop trying to equate success to money, status, all that kind of stuff. And I think uh, mastering and understanding our mental health gets us there. Now, on the physical health standpoint, like 
I was never the person that was super big on physical health because young when I was younger, I was super skinny. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, um, and it was hard for me to like gain weight, put on muscle, all that kind of stuff. And so um at first it wasn't something that was at the top of my head, but I've learned over time that I use my physical health to also play into my mental health because being active in the gym, going to the gym, getting your endorphins high, all that kind of stuff that you get from actually being active helps you mentally. Like that's one of the things that I always say with people that's dealing with depression or anxiety or mental health issues in general, going to the gym is very important, right? And it's not like you're going to the gym to like become a bodybuilder, right. but you're just going to the gym just to get active, to get your blood flowing, right? Like a lot of us live sedentary lifestyles where it's like we sit down for a living. A lot of people work from home, they sit down for a living, right? So when you're doing all of that sitting, it's very difficult for you to develop that kind of lifestyle that's inducive for you or conducive for you to be really healthy. So I think it's important for us to actually make time to actually do that physical stuff, which is actually going to the gym, staying active, all that kind of stuff, bro. Yeah, I, I think um, talking about the physical health real quick, because I do want to get back onto the mental health. Mm -hmm. But, you know, like you said, a lot of black men, because we have such as natural physique, you know, we don't necessarily think about our, our fitness until we get older. And then when your metabolism starts slowing down, like mm -hmm. I'll be playing mm -hmm. basketball. Like I ain't never had to stretch before. Now I finish a game. I'm like, damn, my back hurt. Like my yeah, leg yeah. hurt. Like, you know what yeah. I'm saying? Yep. Like, my, yep. my energy levels isn't as high. Like yeah. I, my, my, my stamina isn't as high. So I didn't take those into consideration until I got older and I started to feel the effects on my body. Yeah. So I was like, man, I got to get back in the gym more. Like, yeah. you know what I mean? I'm going up a flight of steps and I'm out of breath. And I'm mm -hmm. like, nah, this ain't me. Like, you know what I'm saying? But just to get back on the mental health, um, and that's another thing too, when you get older, you start to re realize the value of mental health because when we were younger in our community, mental health was looked at as number one, our parents can never afford it. They mm -hmm. looked at us like, oh, it's crazy. You ain't crazy, nothing wrong with you. Like, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So, and then- You just it, had that conversation. Yeah, like, yeah. so it was just like, yeah. and then also, well, if you really did need it, well, I can't afford it because, you know, mm -hmm. sometimes in certain insurances don't cover it um, for like a therapist and things of that nature. Mm -hmm. So with those resources now, I feel like they're being more accepted. You know, I, I hear Charlamagne talk about mental health all the time mm -hmm. and how important it is. And mm -hmm. now that I'm older, I'm starting to realize, man, we all need mental health. Black men, black women, we, we got a lot of trauma, built mm -hmm. up trauma that mm -hmm. we need to, be able to talk to a professional and you know be able to you know exercise those options and I, and I think black people we we the ones that really put mental health to the side uh for the most part you look at other races like other races been going to therapists and seeing therapists since they they kids you understand mm. and we might be the ones that need it the most and we've been putting it to the side for forever you know what I mean but, I, but I'm glad that this is the generation that I feel like is is changing and it's more focused on it in the black community. I love that. And especially when you see things like what Will Smith breaking down, he is somebody that you would deem one of the most successful black men in the world, right? Uh -huh. And his mental is not right. And he, right. he can't enjoy his life because his mental is not this. So it's definitely important, like no matter what you're doing in your life. That's, That's, a, valid, right. that's a valid point. Um, getting into my next topic, I know you spoke a little bit about depression. And um, I recently seen on your page actually mm -hmm. um, about the suicide rates for black men yeah. being higher than any other in any um, racial group. Yeah. Um, why do you think that is? Um, it's a variety of things that plays into that right now. I think we mentioned one of them with uh, accessibility, right? Like a lot of us don't have accessibility to mental health resources, but there's also another big thing which we talked about earlier, which is um, just a taboo when it comes to mental health, right? A lot of us, don't feel like we can have these kind of conversations about where we are mentally, about not feeling like we are up to par. And so that kind of festers and, and creates this snowball effect where you get into this depression, right? And I always tell people like, um, a lot of people don't understand suicide. I've had suicidal ideations before when I was younger, so I understand it to a, a certain degree, right? Um, I haven't had suicide attempts, but I've definitely had suicidal ideations. So I understand the mindset that an individual is in when they are cont contemplating suicide. Um, Suicide is a solution, right? A lot of people don't like to ha like have that conversation, but that is what people deem it to be. Suicide is a solution for people that are dealing with something that they feel like is too heavy for them to actually be able to come out of, right? And so the solution is to end it all because I don't have the tools to be able to actually navigate this stress or anxiety or depression that I'm dealing with, right? And so once we can understand suicide from that aspect, we can understand why people decide to die by suicide and then also understand what we can do in order to help them, right? And that's why I try to lead by solutions, right? Like 
try to make a solution based thinking. Okay, you're depressed. Why are you depressed? What's actually happening? And uh, how can we help you out of that? Right. Um, so I think the, the, one of the big reasons, like I said, is just uh, accessibility, affordability, um, and then also the fact that it's very taboo in our in our culture for us to be talking about mental health. And then what black men specifically, bro, like we don't feel like we are allowed to be human. That is a big thing, bro. Mm -hmm. Like that is a huge yeah. thing, bro. It's a huge thing. Like I even I even experienced it myself, and I talk about mental health all the time, right? Like the other day, last week, um, I I had a moment where I lashed out on my brother, right? Because I was dealing with mass stress throughout the week, IG, all these different things. I'm trying to launch this this community. All these things is going on, and so I lashed out on my brother um, towards the end of the week because the stress was just building up, building up, building up. I didn't feel like I had a moment throughout the week where I was just allowed to be human and actually feel that I was stressed and take some time away from all the things that I was doing. Right. I didn't humanize myself to say, okay, yo, bro, you know what? You're going through a lot. Like, just take some time and slow down. I didn't allow myself to do that. And I knew I was stressed. I remember saying to myself, like, yo, bro, you super stressed right now. Like, you need to put something down. But I still, I still didn't do it, right? I, and I also, after I lashed out, I was so upset at myself because in my mind, I'm like, bro, you lead this platform. How you lashing out on your brother? You, I'm, I'm not even allowing myself to be human after I lashed out because I'm thinking to myself, you shouldn't, have, you should never done that. Right. I'm not giving myself grace. I'm not empathizing any of that. All the things that I'm telling people to do, I'm struggling doing it with myself, right? And so when when you think about it from that lens, it's 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 just hard for us, right? It's hard for us to humanize ourselves. It's hard for us to um, understand that we are human beings and we're allowed to. One, make mistakes. We're allowed to not be where we want to be. We're allowed to be different than other people. We're allowed to um, feel our full range of emotions and we're allowed to uh, be struggling, right? And I think that's the biggest part of it is like, we don't feel like we're allowed to be in any of these states. And so because of that, we don't reach out. We don't have these conversations. And as a result of that, we end up getting into a depressed um, state. And unfortunately, a lot of us end up Getting into a position where we feel like suicide is the best option and the solution for what we're dealing with. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm glad you said that because I didn't I didn't put two and two together until you did say that. Mm -hmm. But um, you know, obviously we have you know, a lot of black men are going with going through that that stress and depression in their lives, and they feel the need to cope with you know whether it's drugs or like mm -hmm. when you even when you listen to rappers nowadays and they start to say like I have these suicidal thoughts or like mm -hmm. I'm really going through a lot. Mm -hmm. And people are just saying, oh, well, he's on some like, you know, just emo, whatever the case is. But yeah. these rap a lot of these black men and rappers are going through this. And maybe this is one way for them to vent themselves, maybe do the right. music yeah. or do the drugs, you know, yeah, yeah. he's popping some type of drugs or alcohol. Like, yeah. you know, and um, like, like when I seen that, it caught me off guard, but I wasn't surprised about that, that stat. Mm -hmm. And I'm just like, the fact about us not being able to be human, you know, it does play a factor because there's so much stress put on us to either... um. Uh, succeed or mm -hmm. be in a level or be in a position where we'll be able to uh, support everybody financially. So we got to right. work twice as harder. Right. You know what I mean? Right. Um, take on extra shifts, extra hours. I know men like ourselves, we work, we got the podcast, but we work, we work plenty yeah. of hours. This is so. not, this is not yeah, support. Like, you know what I mean? So it's just, yeah, nah, yeah. Nah, yeah, not yet. Nah, hopefully, yeah. You know yeah. I mean? but, Eventually. So, yeah, so, absolutely. But you know, mm -hmm. I still try to take that time out to go to the gym and you know, mm -hmm. I think, you know, whether we want to admit it, or not a lot. I think a lot of black men do have these suicidal thoughts. And mm -hmm. I know people, um, I know people, I, I know people that I was close to that actually took their lives from suicide. And then you mm -hmm. would never think like, yo, like their lives look the perfect on the outside. You right. never know what people are going through on the inside. And right. I'm just like, wow, they really did that. I, like it caught me off guard because they never expressed that, like, mm -hmm. you know, they was mm -hmm. going through something. So, right. you know, that's that's a big topic to, to kind of have. Yeah, I also think that um a lot of men are afraid to look weak. Mm -hmm. Like, sometimes yeah, yeah. you're the, you the rock of your family. Cause I know me personally, everybody come to me to talk. But it's like, who does that person talk to at the end of the day? So mm -hmm. you got to have a, a outlet to express your feelings without feeling like you're being judged. I think that's the most important thing. Like, you don't want to be judged or look weak in front of other people. So... It's good to have like bros you could talk to or, or anybody really. You know what I mean, but that's why therapy is important, I believe. No, nah, that's a fact. Yeah, you definitely got to talk to a therapist and have spaces where we all feel comfortable mm -hmm. expressing ourselves. That's a big thing, bro. Yeah, um, that's that's yeah. a that's a good point about these spaces because I do want to get into that to mm -hmm. get into my next topic. Mm -hmm. um, I do often hear 
people, you know what I mean, mm-hmm. complain about men having podcasts, specifically <laughs> black men. He said and, people. Um, people. <laughs> people like, you know what I mean? like, so um, I hear them complain, oh, y'all need to just go to therapy. Why do you, why do y'all yeah. have podcasts? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, how important do you think it is for black men to have these spaces, like a podcast or whatever the case may be? I think... Um, I think it's I think it's super important for us to have spaces where we feel comfortable in expressing ourselves, right? Um, a lot of times we don't have that space until we go to the barbershop or we're mm-hmm. sitting here having a conversation. No cameras, no mics, no audio being recorded. Basketball, mm-hmm. um, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, exactly, yeah. locker room, that kind of stuff, right? So it's very important. What what I end up, what I always think about is when I was in college, right? I had a, a group of bros, and um, they had a dorm, and uh, we would all go into their dorm room. Uh, after a long, stressful day, and we would just sit in there, we would watch shows, we would play games, we freestyle, we do a bunch of random stuff. And after I left, I remember thinking to myself, like, damn, like, I feel I'm good, I'm chilling, like, right. I feel light, right. you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And when I finally graduated and I started living, I was living in Massachusetts by myself, I didn't have that outlet, I remember feeling super depressed. I was like, yo, why do I feel so depressed? And it's like, because, bro, what you felt like, yeah, that therapeutic outlet that you had where you could go with your bros and you can guys you guys could just vent and just talk about stuff you don't have that anymore right mm. and a lot of us don't have that within our friend groups right and so we go to these podcasts we start our podcast with friends and we start expressing right and we share and our expression is very raw sometimes right and it's not filtered right and it's not mm. coming from a lens of actual being actually being healed or healing right and so when it when it goes out into the public people are like what the hell? That's what they be talking about? Right, right. It's like, yeah, this is what we talk about, right? Yeah, like when, uh, when other guys it, hear, they be like, yo, these are the conversations we've been having. Yeah, the these are the conversations we've been having, right? I think it's 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 two parts, right? I don't want to absolve us of any uh, accountability, right? We need to hold ourselves accountable, especially when we have platforms. We need to make sure that our our language, our tone, our voice, the way that we communicate is in a way that is conducive to what we're actually trying to do in terms of our mission morals, values, whatever the case may be, right? And we need to determine that for ourselves. Mm-hmm. So we do need to hold ourselves accountable. But on the same on the same token, um, on the flip side of that, like I think the black community has a certain level of apprehension towards black people just in general. Like mm-hmm. we're just very apprehensive towards each other, bro. You know, we don't empathize with each other, right? When we see a black person that's making a mistake, the first thing we go to do is criticize, write a comment, say something negative, whatever the case may be. We don't even think to think yo, what if they're going through something? Mm -hmm. What if there's something underneath that? Like, we don't have these thoughts at all. And I think that is one of our biggest problems is that we don't stop to empathize, right? We don't stop to empathize. And I think before I even do any, like, because I react to a lot of stuff, um, I look at a lot of stuff online and I'm like, dang, I don't really know. I I don't really agree with that. But I can understand where they're coming from. Mm -hmm. Even if it's something that doesn't feel right to me. Mm -hmm. Even if it's a black woman that's like, yo, divest from black men. Don't deal with black men. There's no such thing as black love. That stuff hurts me. Right, right. But I can understand where she's coming from. Mm. I don't go on to her comments and, yo, you crazy. Blah, blah, blah. You know what I'm saying? Because I get it. I know where it's coming from. It's not my place to then go into that community and then say, yo, y'all look crazy, blah, blah, and invalidate them for how they feel. Mm. It's my place to hold myself accountable to have a platform where I can now speak on those things and educate people. I always say empathize and educate. Empathize with the person, allow them to express how they feel, create that space, but then also educate when when necessary. Sometimes you can't educate right in a person's platform. Sometimes it has to come outside of that. Sometimes it has to come uh, in a conversation with them later, one on one. Sometimes it's just not in the comments, bro. And a lot of times, like we we think we commenting back and forth and arguing with people, and like we're gonna debate and change their mind. It's like, bro, people are already hell bent on their idea. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I make posts all the time. People come in my comments, leave a thought, a thought, a whole think piece, bro. And I'm like, okay, you know what? This person, I got, I got, I know this person gonna be able to listen. You know what I'm saying? I'm gonna write a paragraph back. And it's not even disrespectful. Yeah. I'm coming from a space where I'm just trying to get them to understand where I'm coming from. Mm-hmm. They write a whole paragraph back. They don't even read it. It's like they didn't even read it. Right. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, why am I wasting my time? Mm-hmm. Right? Like I could be, I could be writing a post. I could be helping somebody get therapy. I could be talking to my moms. I could be doing all this different. Why am I going back and forth with somebody in the comments? Anytime I see people arguing in the comments, 
I'm just like, bro, like y'all, y'all must not have better things to do, right? Like, <laughs> y'all just must not have better things to do, right? And I know sometimes they don't, like, yeah. You know I mean? that, they know. They, and, and as content creators, right? Like, I, and this is the last thing I'm gonna say on this, right? Mm. As content creators, it is our job to in, invoke conversation, but I think we need to invoke conversation that leads to um, a, a, a positive change, right? Or at least to our goal, whatever our goal is, right? So it's important for us to invoke this conversation. Um, and allow people to lead it to however they want to lead it. But we have to also understand, like, where do we want this conversation to go? How do we want people in our community uh, talking to each other? And how do we want to push the how do we want to push the culture forward and all that kind of stuff, bro? So I always try to I don't want to have I don't want people arguing in my comments. But at the end of the day, I can't control that. I can create the content that that facilitates conversation mm -hmm. and how y'all choose to converse is up to y'all. All right. Good, I, I hate I, I hate you talk about empathy. Mm -hmm. How you empathize with other people, even though they come in against black men, whatever. Mm -hmm. But I think, do you think that black men get that same empathy from any other group of people? I think, I think, I think we do. I think those people aren't pushed to the forefront. Mm -hmm. I think the people that we see a lot, you gotta, man, you gotta understand what people mm -hmm. are doing on social media, right? Mm -hmm. I'm a creator. Like, y'all are creators too, right? right. Y'all know what it is. Mm -hmm. Y'all know what it is more than somebody else that's in the comments. People are gonna show what's gonna what's gonna bring the most interaction. We do it. Right. We do it. We know what it is, right? Mm -hmm. Like, there's certain content that we put up, we like, man, I know for a fact, this one, they're gonna, they gonna be, they're gonna be there. Yeah. <laughs> you know, they're gonna be under this one. You know what I'm saying? We do that. You know what I'm saying? We do that. So we gotta understand that, like, yo, bro, if if people know that there's certain content that they can push mm -hmm. that's gonna generate interaction and engagement, and engagement is currency in mm -hmm. social media, that's what they're gonna push. Mm -hmm. So when we say people don't empathize, people do empathize. I, I know, yo, bro, when I tell you, I know hundreds and hundreds and hundreds, and I could plug y'all in, mm -hmm. with, of black therapists that are empathizing that love black men, black women that are under my comments that love black men, that want, what, that want black men, that want the best for black men, that empathize with black men. Mm -hmm. They got a thousand followers. You think they comment is going to go viral? You think they, they post and content is going to go viral? Mm -hmm. You think that stuff is going to go, because people don't want, mm -hmm. if you, and I always, I said this before, and I'm going to keep on saying it. If you follow spiritual work, I was, you I was follow the shade up, room, bring that up, yeah. you follow Bowler Alert, and you expecting to see people empathizing with black people and that getting pushed and that being culture and that being something that generates engagement, it's yeah. not going to happen. Mm. It's not going to happen, bro. But the reason I ask this is yeah, because go ahead. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that once this, this space with men expressing themselves has become a thing now, mm -hmm. there's a lot of outrage. Yeah. But you don't see this outrage with other people expressing themselves. Mm. Yeah, because it, how, how mm -hmm. I think of it is, you know, this is just a genre of podcast. There's a lot of different genres, right? Yeah, yeah. Nobody, and there's black men in several different spaces, whether it's finances or in your leisure, whether mm. it's technology with Marquez Brownlee, whether it's sports, Stephen A. Smith. There's mm. black men in a variety of different genres of content out there. Mm. But somehow people seem to get focused on one one Why genre yeah, of yeah. you know content creation yeah, like yeah. there isn't other black men out there making positive content like, yeah. but like you said mm. the positive content or the the content about something Stephen A Smith talk about sports every day mm. as people under his comments like oh all you do is talk about sport like that's what he mm. does like you mm. get what i'm saying mm. so i find it disingenuous for people to try to um limit men black men's spaces especially when they have podcasts and i and i understand you know there is a certain level of um accountability Obviously, we can't just be on here saying outrageously crazy, disrespectful yeah, yeah, yeah. things, yeah, like right, right. some of the divestment movements yeah. of that nature. Mm -hmm. But, you know, there's a reason why a lot of black men are resonating to this space is because they can see themselves within the content creator or mm -hmm. just the, the the conversation and things of that nature. Mm -hmm. So Here's what I'll say on that, right? Like, we got to understand that uh, the world isn't just how we see it, right? Like, we're in the black community, so all we see is black stuff mm -hmm. right we're not in the white community we're not in the hispanic community whatever the case may be right i pay I, I pay very close attention to people's comments um just because as a creator it's just interesting to me and i, I like to not feel um alone in what i deal with and sometimes i get comments i'm just like yo these people wow like people are crazy like i'm not even this is not even where i'm going yeah. where'd you get this from bro? Yeah. Uh -huh. like where the, uh -huh. like where did this Flip come from right yeah. you know what i'm saying so i go like i go into Stephen a's comments and i and i read it sometimes and people under there just doing the same stuff yeah, that they do right, right. i go on the uh rashad and, and and uh and, and troy's comments earn your leisure and i look at and people just saying the same stuff 19 keys all the different black 
creators, thought leaders, black men, whatever the case may be, white men, whoever, any anytime you're in a in a public light, right? You have more than a certain number of followers, people are going to leave their opinions on social media. I had to get to the point where I was just like, you know what? It don't matter how I do it, what I do, somebody going to have some kind of problem with it. Mm-hmm. Regardless, I could say, "Yo, man, we need to love our black woman, man." Because that's how we're going to make a, a better black family. And that's how we're going to make a better black community. Mm-hmm. You know what somebody going to say? Nah, because this black woman cheated on me. Mm-hmm. And I can't believe you would say that. This is supposed to be a page for black men. You're crazy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> true, true, true. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. Is he wrong? Is he wrong for saying that's his experience? Mm-hmm. So I have to get to a point where it's like, all right, cool. That's all right. But that's not me. That's, yeah. not, our, that's, not, that's not my perspective. Mm-hmm. So I'm just going to let him do what he needs to do. Vent and get it out. And I'm going to keep making my content and do what I need to do because I can't get caught up in how somebody feels about what I'm creating if I know that my intention was positivity. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, um, thank you for joining us, by the way, Drew. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> oh, <laughs> when did you get here? Yeah, I did a magic trick. <laughs> so yeah, get into um, yeah. my next topic. I, um, you know, you have a lot of great content on you. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to hold you. I appreciate that, um, You had a post about um, black men looking for women that to build with right yeah yeah, yeah. um yeah. and very much on our especially on our show mm-hmm. we deal with a lot of women who are not in the business of building yeah you know, yeah man yeah I see so that. um <laughs> what are your thoughts about the whole concept of building with your partner yeah um it's very interesting right like when you think about I, i'm all about building a better black community and when i really sat down and thought about how do we build a better black community it starts with the black family, right? Mm-hmm. And so I think about uh, if we talk about heterosexual relationships, black man, black woman, and that's why I create that relationship content. And that's why I talk about building with a black woman, right? Especially for us as black men, black men and having a woman that you know that is down to build with you. I think the problem that we fall into is that we don't know how to determine, or some of us don't know how to determine whether or not a woman is able to build with us or wants to build with us, mm. right? We get caught up in sex and looks and what she's saying and all these different things. Right. It's like, bro, if you ask a certain number of questions, like you can really quickly be able to tell where a woman's mindset is at. Right, right. We really only need like, maybe like three to five questions. Like, right. what are you trying to do in life? Like, where are you trying to go, right? Depending on her answer right then and there, you could probably chop it right then and there. If she can't even, you know what I'm saying? If, if you can't give me three to five year plan, what are we doing? Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Why am I even? We can't build. Mm-hmm. You can't. You don't know how to build for yourself, so we can't build. Right? Mm-hmm. You can't build with me if you can't. You know what I'm saying? If you ain't got something that you could build for yourself, right? Mm-hmm. So right then and there, what are what are you doing with your life? Um, what do you want out of a partner? That right there, we don't even ask that. We don't even ask that. That's a great question. At all, it's like, what do you want out of the out of a partner? Now that you tell me what you want, I can be able to determine. I can make a Venn diagram in my head. I can see what I have what you said you want and what we have in common. If what we have in common isn't more than what I just have or what you, you know what I'm saying? Like, mm. it, it don't make no sense. I'm not even gonna keep going. So that's that's another question. Another, a third question is, are you healing? Mm. Are you looking to heal? Are you in therapy? Are you focusing on your mental health? What, like, what does that process look like for you, right? Because those two, the, the, the two answers before could be great. It could be, oh yeah, I got this five year plan and I'm looking for this other man. And you're like, oh yeah, everything's cool. Then when we get to the healing, like, nah, I ain't, you know, like I've been cheated on and my pops left when I was this age and blah, blah. Nah, I ain't going to therapy. What I need to go to therapy for? Watch when y'all get in a relationship. Because what's gonna end up happening, you're gonna have this really driven girl, everything gonna be cool. Y'all gonna, yeah, power couple, everything's straight. But underneath all that, there's no, there's no foundation for y'all to have real conversations about stuff. Y'all have issues when it comes to conflict resolution, all these different things, because Healing hasn't occurred mm-hmm. and y'all are not in the healing process. So once you start asking those those three questions, it's like, okay, I can't build with you mm-hmm. if you don't, if you have certain answers. And now if you have different answers, it's like, okay, let's see how we can make this work. But because we're so interested in like dating and messing around and sex and all this other stuff, like we end up getting in all these situations, situationships and relationships that aren't good for us, bro. Mm-hmm. And then that's when you end up having people on social media. It's like, oh, all black women like this, mm-hmm. all black men like this. I can't find the right one. Where they at? I don't know where they at, blah, blah, blah. It's because you ain't looking properly. Right. That, that's true. All right, I got a two-part question for you. Go ahead. All right, yeah. so you brought up mental health. Mm-hmm. All right, so one I want to think is, as a black man, mm-hmm. we always get stuck in a place where we try to 
decide if we go to therapy, do we speak to another black man? Mm. Or does it matter the sex, it the does color matter. of it? It does matter. Like that? Yeah. Because then you be in this like, this white man can't tell me about what I'm going it through. It does matter. And, yeah. mm -hmm. uh, you know, sometimes you feel like, oh, maybe I'm just overthinking mm -hmm. and maybe I should think outside the box with getting somebody outside my race. Mm -hmm. So here, here's my response to that, bro. Uh, I'll tell you what my experience was. And this is why this is what we talk about when we talk about solution based thinking, right? This is this is a prime example of that. Mm -hmm. My personal experience, right? Mm -hmm. When I was looking for a therapist my first time, uh, I had just gotten out of a relationship where I got cheated on mm -hmm. with a black woman. And my thought process was all women are evil. And so I was like, <sighs> I did some self-reflection. I'm like, I know this is probably not the best thought process to have, but this is the thought process that I have right now. I don't want to talk to a black man about this because I feel like I've gotten enough conversations with black men about this. I've been talking to my bros all my damn life. Exactly. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, yeah. I've been Definitely talking to the bros sense. all my life. Mm -hmm. I need a woman's perspective and I also needed that nurturing from a woman. I needed, mm -hmm. to, I needed to build a better connection with black women because I knew that my connection had got messed up based off the relationship that I was in. Mm -hmm. And so for me, that was my thought process and that's why I chose a black woman as my therapist. Now, I'm not saying if you get cheated on as a black man, you have to choose a black woman. That's mm -hmm. not what I'm saying. I'm saying you have to do that self-reflection for yourself to understand what you need out of your therapist. Do you need a man because you feel more comfortable and you want to have that locker room talk kind of vibe? Or do you need a woman because you want that more kind of nurturing love and you also want to have a difference in perspective that will help you when it comes to relationships and all that kind of stuff, right? And I'm not saying that a black man can't nurture. Yeah. I'm just saying that sometimes it can be better coming from a black woman, right? Like a lot of us sometimes have um, relationships with our mothers that aren't the healthiest. Mm -hmm. And so when you get into therapy and you have a black woman as your therapist, she can help you to fix that relationship through her relationship with you. And it's something called, I think it's called um, transference, right? Where we we don't even know that it's going on or well, I, I as a client don't know what's going on, but the therapist knows that she's basically playing a motherly role in certain sessions and she's using that to help facilitate healing. So that's another a, another big thing, right? Like think about your parents and your and your uh like the the kind of trauma that you've had growing up. If you had a bad relationship with your pops, maybe you maybe you do want to have a black man. If you had a bad relationship with your mom, maybe you do want to have a black woman, right? And that can kind of also help to figure out your decision. And subconsciously, we kind of make these decisions anyway because I didn't have the best relationship with my mom because she worked a lot. And so I'm thinking I'm choosing a black woman because I want a difference in perspective. Yeah. But really, on a subconscious level, I'm choosing a black woman because. I wanted to also bridge that relationship that I had. With, I didn't have with my mom. That that relationship that I wish I had it with my mom. Mm -hmm. That's crazy. Okay, so even in that, with a relationship, right? Mm -hmm. Do you say that people should go separately or do couples therapy? Um, it depends on the situation, right? Like, so I know a lot of people are like, "Oh, after they cheat, you know, you should break up with them." And I'm 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 part of that that train, right? But there's people that go through infidelity. They go to they go to couples therapy, and they they good. Everything's good after that, right? right. So I'm not gonna say to not do something based on a certain situation. All I'm gonna say is understand where you are at and what you're feeling and then figure out what you wanna do. But I always, like, we were just talking about couples therapy, right? Like, I was telling, uh, I was telling you, Ace, right? Eli, yeah. Eli, that's Ace. Oh, Ace, my fault, my fault, bro. Yeah, it's cool. Eli, Eli, <laughs> my fault. I was telling Eli, I was saying, I was like, yo, bro, um, I, I I had couples therapy right before I came into this. Mm. And he was, you was about to ask me like, yo, bro, like, you good? Like, what happened? Everything all right? Yeah, like, every, yeah, I was like, yeah, like, I'm straight. And this is what happens, right? Like, we think that because somebody's in therapy, like, oh, shit, like, this got some, yeah. this <laughs> thing got some crazy shit going. Like, you know what I'm like, saying? Yeah. Like, behind the scenes, he got some crazy shit going on. Like, they mm -hmm. beat each other up or something. Like, nah, bro, like, <laughs> we straight. You know, like, we straight. It's yeah. just certain things. Like, what I was telling you is like, yo, we got certain things that we deal with on a, on um, on a a like, a, a conflict level or, like, a disagreement where it's like, Nobody's heated, nothing crazy, but it's good to have a mediator in the middle of that to understand where we're both coming from mm -hmm. and get to a solution or have a, a or have a path forward. And so that's what a couples therapist that's what our couples therapist helps us with, man. Like really helps us with what helps us with understanding each other on a better level so that we can better um our relationship. Gotcha. So yeah. And I think that's where the, the stigma it's 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 really stopping people from from flourishing because mm -hmm. people go to they want to go to couples therapy when you have a problem you mm -hmm. go to couples therapy just to make the relationship better and like, not nothing could be wrong yeah not even just couples therapy therapy in right, general. exactly yeah, exactly, exactly. Mm -hmm. but, I, but I want wait, wait I want to ask one question about your your first question the the three to five year plan that you say you ask on yeah things, right mm -hmm. 
Cause you know, men is looked at. I don't ask that on dates, but I'm. It's oh, a right. good, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 It's a I good don't ask that on dates, but I figure it out over time. Yeah, right. Go ahead. Mm-hmm. So, so men are supposed to be the leader in a relationship, right? Mm-hmm. So if a woman doesn't come in with a three to five year plan, mm-hmm. but you're the leader, can't you work with her to help her? See, you know what I mean? A, see, we're getting into a deep, a deep conversation, <laughs> right? <laughs> we we put ourselves in a position of like trying to facilitate everybody's life around us. Mm-hmm. And I understand that that's important in a in a in a sense, mm-hmm. but we have to understand that the people around us are also individuals. I can't tell you how to run the podcast. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? You need to have, and, and, and I understand that you're a man, but right. But at the end of the day, right? Like, we need to understand people are individuals. Like, so while we want to be able to protect, provide, and 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 mm-hmm. lead, mm-hmm. we have to be able to allow people to lead their lives themselves. And then figure out how we can help and support. And I think in a, a, a lot of our relationships, we come in thinking that we got to be Superman and doing everything. Mm-hmm. When Shorty got to come in with some kind of, you know what I'm saying? Like she got to come in with something. Because right. then what do we? What does she just? Do? She just cooking, clean, like bro. Mm-hmm. Shit, they ain't even doing that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> oh my apologies. Yeah, yeah. Nah, this is a positive episode. You good? Yeah, you, good nah, you good? You good? But nah, for real, right? Like that's not what it should be, right? Like we got to get out of this, like. I'm all, believe me, I'm for traditional relationships. Mm-hmm. I want my girl to, to cook, clean, take care of those kind of things. But I also want my girl to have a mind. You know what I'm saying? True. I want her to have goals of her own. And I want to be able to support her in those and have her support me in mine as well. Mm-hmm. So when I say, what's your three to five year plan? Mm-hmm. What I'm really asking is, do you have goals and aspirations and dreams outside of just being in a relationship? Mm-hmm. Because if it's just you want to just be in a relationship, I don't know what we're doing. Because mm. I'm going to go and get mine, but I, we, you got to go and get yours too, yeah. right? And then we can figure out how to make those things work together. So that's what I'm interested in. Mm. I want my shorty to be a go-getter. I want her to go and get hers too and me help her and figure out how to go and do that. Imagine them three to five years. She's like, yeah, I just want to cook and clean for you. But Go ahead, go ahead. Like th- this is why I feel like that concept of building together is important because mm-hmm. if one person is expected to have all the resources and the Bro. other one is just kind of draining them from the resources, great, they have nothing now. Great it's like, all right, well, you don't have no more resources on to the next. Like then it's like, well, you know, that's why the concept of building together I find is way more important for our community. Yes, when we had. I, I look back in like the '60s and. And I can't get the specific years right, like you know, Dr. Umar or some shit like that. But you know, you look at those those time the frames in yeah, the past, <laughs> and you see that the black community was way more strong mm-hmm. um, and united than obviously it is now, because people had family, that foundation, that nuclear family, that structure in mm-hmm. their lives, mm-hmm. and obviously the black community benefited from that. You know what I mean? So, right. like you said, with those questions, was pretty powerful. Actually, yeah. L- let me let me add this to that, right? Like, um. When I when I when I think about our relationship and like just me and my girl, I think about the fact that uh she's coming in with her set of goals and dreams. I'm coming in with mine and we're trying to figure out how we can better each other's lives and how we can support each other. Mm-hmm. And when I think about building, um I think a lot of times we come into this relationship and as men, we get all of the pressure put on us mm-hmm. to figure something out for the entire family. Mm-hmm. You know how stressful that is, bro? Yeah, that's true. Right? And then we take that as like, this is a badge of honor. Like, this is what we should be doing. Like, mm-hmm. yes, I have the pleasure of being able to take my family out of poverty. Bro, that's a hard thing to do oh, yeah. for just one person. Mm-hmm. That's hard as hell. Yeah. Like, bro, we that is not, I don't want that stress on me, bro. I got enough stuff that I'm dealing with. I don't need to be the person that's bringing everybody in my family out of poverty. Yeah. If I'm getting into a relationship, I want my shorty to be thinking about that as well and figuring out ways that we can both work on that. Not just me, because it becomes, it, be, it puts a lot of financial stress on, on you as the man in a relationship. And a lot of relationships end up failing. A lot of marriages end up failing due to what? Finances, bro. Do you have these conversations with independent women? What do you mean independent ones? I mean the ones that- I don't talk- I'm, See, this is the thing, right? <laughs> yeah. Let, let me tell y'all something right now, Because bro. I mean, I, I, hate, I think yeah. every dude thinks like how you're thinking yeah, right now, but yeah. imagine having that conversation with I don't woman. do that. Why am I doing that, bro? <laughs> For what? Tell me why am I, I going to go talk to an independent woman 
to give, about these kind of things. To give different perspectives. It's cool to give different perspectives, but we also have to understand that there's certain people that are already hell, like what we talked about earlier, that are hell bent right. on having She already on that independent. Mm -hmm. Her mind is already set. You know what I'm saying? And here's the thing, right? I, I think we need to change independent woman, right? Because there's a lot of... My shorty's an independent woman. She yeah. can do everything on her own if she wants yeah. to, right? She chooses not to because she knows that she has me. So it's not an independent woman thing. It's a... Uh, it's a woman that needs healing kind of thing. It's mm. a hyper independence thing because mm. independence and hyper independence are completely different, mm -hmm. right? And it can happen in men and women. Right. So I think a lot of times, like we get into these conversations with women that are calling themselves independent women. Mm. Women's like, no, you're hyper independent. That's exactly. a trauma response. Like and you could be independent outside of the relationship. With yeah, you, you work. need to yeah, be yeah, independent. Yeah, yeah. I don't. Uh, here's the thing, right? I don't want you hitting me up all day, every day. <laughs> Y'all don't want that. Y'all right. do want an independent exactly. woman. Yeah. Because right. we have those conversations, like, yo, bro, damn, Shorty calling me again, bro. Right. Right. Like, imagine if I came in here and I was on the phone with my shorty the whole time. I had FaceTime sitting right here. You know what I'm saying? And I'm like, yeah, I can't get on FaceTime. You know, like we don't need that, bro. Which we want her to be but independent. This is why I always talk about the word right. interdependence. So, you know, we, we mm. you know we don't talk about that enough in our community because we yeah. independent or nothing. Like, you know what I mean? So, um, get into my next topic real quick. Yo, mm. well, for real, how, how much time we got? Let's say 42 minutes. So, um, we got five minutes. Five minutes. All okay. right. So, this is my last question. Um, I seen a post on um, your page mm -hmm. and I can't remember the woman's name, um, but she made a statement about how black men are being undervalued today. Mm. Um, oh, Ronnie, I think it was Ronnie Brown. I, I believe so. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, can you speak more about that? And do you think that's true? <sighs> mm. That is a really good question, bro. It's probably a, five, a longer than a five minute it conversation. Is a, it is a longer than a five minute conversation. Here's what I'll say on it, bro. There are certain people that, that do undervalue black men, right? I think we also undervalue ourselves. Mm. Right, I think we also undervalue ourselves, and that makes it easier for other people to undervalue us as well. If you don't understand your value as a man, that's how you communicate yourself to the world. Right, like if I if I don't understand my value, if I don't show up as a certain way, everybody else is not going to be able to understand and identify who I am and my value, and so I won't show up in a certain way. So for me, I always point it back to us. I'm like, okay, cool, we are being undervalued. Okay, what can we personally do about it? Because we know that that's a thing. So what can we do about it to change that narrative? And I think a lot of it comes down to humanizing ourselves, creating these spaces where we can have these productive kind of conversations, and then also uh, figuring out ways that we can hold ourselves accountable, not in a toxic way, right? Like, I think a lot of times, like, we get held accountable for certain things that we just like, bro, how, what am I supposed to do about that, right? right. Like, but certain things that we can't hold ourselves accountable for, like healing, and also uh, holding, our, holding our bros accountable for doing certain things. So I think... Um, we do and we are undervalued in specific spaces, but I also feel like there are a lot of people that, again, don't have maybe the platform or don't get pushed as much just on social media that are doing the work to show that black men are valued, right? That are creating these spaces that are not just black men, right? Like when I think about um, the healing in the, in the black community and people that have facilitated a lot of healing specific, specifically for black men, right? Like a lot of them are black women, bro. Mm. We are not aware of this because this is not what gets pushed. Like a lot of them are black women. Like there's a lot of black women that started whole initiatives for black men. Black Men Heal is an initiative that gives eight weeks of free therapy to black men. That is started by two black women. That was founded by two black women. Therapy for black men. It is mainly run by a, a black woman. Her name is Vladimir. So it's like, bro, we got we got spaces that are running run by black women. There are black women that are very interested in uh, showing that we are valuable in the society, but we have to be able to find those spaces, amplify those spaces, and then also show up in a way where um, people in society understand that we know our value and so that they have to respect that. Yeah. What I want to say real quick before, mm -hmm. we, before we end the show is... Um, you know, as a content creator, I've seen like I'm very big on the black community, but like like you are, mm -hmm. I really want to focus on black men because obviously the more black leaders we have, the more black men of, in position of powers we have, the better off the black community in general is. Mm -hmm. So I was telling you lately, I've seen you know as a, as content creators, we get the f fundraisers and things to add on to your posts and things of that nature. I've seen one on YouTube. And I was trying to look for a fundraiser specifically for black men. Mm -hmm. And everything was under the umbrella of black people. Mm -hmm. But there were several funds and fundraisers and grants and loans specifically dedicated towards black women. Mm -hmm. And once I started to research, I, I tried to look for grants and everything. Mm -hmm. You know, there was grants specifically made for black women, mm -hmm. but there wasn't nothing really 
specifically made for black men without it being under the umbrella of black people. Mm. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. I've started to see mm-hmm. that more recently and I can't help but to notice that maybe that might be the powers of at B playing, you know, a larger mm. role in this. And I get what you're saying about, you know, we have to take it into our own hands, but sometimes it does feel like as a black man, there's really no resources necessarily specifically dedicated. I know you gave some great, you did yeah. get some great resources. Yeah. But no, I look at yeah. the overall picture. There seems to be more of an initiative to push a certain other group of people mm-hmm. than there is specifically for black men. And um, you know, no, yeah, no, that, you, like that's a deeper conversation. I'm not gonna hold you. That yeah, is it is a very deep. Con- let me just, let right. me just add this real quick. I know we gotta. I know we 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 low on time. Mm-hmm. Um. When when I think about that, I think about the fact that most of the most of the therapists in the black community are black women, right? Mm-hmm. Most of the healing facilitated in the black women are facilitated by black women, right? Because you know we understand that for black women to show feelings is not really that big of a deal, right? Maybe they don't have they. I've had conversations with black women where they're like, "Well, we haven't been taught how to express ourselves either." Mm-hmm. But I'm like, "Yeah, well, y'all haven't been taught how to express yourselves, but at least y'all are allowed to express right. ourselves, right? Like, mm-hmm. we haven't been taught how to express ourselves, and we aren't even allowed to express ourselves, right?" Facts. So I think when we play that, when we take that back into fundraisers and stuff specifically geared towards healing and black men, um, a lot of those fundraisers probably wouldn't even generate that much interest and money. And and the reason why is because as a community, we don't. I don't think we place enough emphasis on healing in our community, specifically around black men and feelings and all these different things, right? And I think that's one of the big reasons why we don't see those those spaces. And I think we have a responsibility to create those spaces for ourselves because a lot of those spaces that are created for women, like it ain't black men creating them. Mm. Like to be honest, right? Like as a as a as a individual, you think about what benefits you, right? And there's nothing wrong with that, right? So when you're creating something. It's about, okay, how can I help other people that also look like me, right? You create this podcast to help yourself, but also other people that look like you. I created Express Yourself Black Man to help myself, but also other people that look like me. So as we get more comfortable with expressing ourselves and more comfortable with feelings, healing, mental health, all that kind of stuff, we'll see more of these nonprofits, fundraisers, all these different things made for black men because Mm -hmm. we're going to be the ones making them. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, I man. But that. anyway, man, appreciate you for, appreciate you for pulling up and having this right. conversation. Yeah. Um, we got to get the fuck about it here. I ain't gonna Facts. hold you. They looking at us. So, yo, get the fuck about it. Right. But um, anyway, make sure y'all like the video. Make sure y'all subscribe. comment, subscribe as well. Mm, I don't, I'm merch. looking at the wrong camera. The camera over here. Like you know what I'm yeah. saying. Like yeah, make sure y'all get oh, the merch. You get the merch. You know what I mean. And check out Express Yourself, Black Man. He got some good content. Over and here. Shout, yes, shout out to Only One Me Brain. You know what I mean, that's just what they. Sorry for being late, y'all. Man, it's it's eight. You gonna deduct that from your pay?